So that's finding purpose. And if you found it right now, that's a blessing, man. And life has many transitions. You don't know where it's going to take you next. One, two, one, two, three, four. I got up and packed in the evening, shook the sleep from my eyes. There's always something about leaving this city at night. Waited around for a second, then the second was gone. I guess it's about time I should be getting on. Now, if you want more of the story, pal, you better call me back. You better not sleep too much tonight. Gene, I got some stuff to do tonight, but I can call you back tomorrow. Oh, here's a thought. Here's a thought. I'm available tomorrow, pal. You ain't dead to me because I'm up here with my nephew smoking weed out of the pipe that he brought. All right, brother. Well, I got stuff I got to do tonight, so. I'm going to my house. So let me let me film what I'm doing right now, and I'll have to. I'm gonna have to get back to you. You're going home. Yep. The first time in a month. So am I. I'm going home. The first time in twenty. So I'm fucking years now. Well, good good for both of us, huh? In 1983, the city of Los Angeles enacted a law known as 8502 that made it illegal to sleep in a car. The law said that no person shall use a vehicle parked on any city street or upon any parking lot owned by the city of Los Angeles as living quarters, either overnight, day by day, or otherwise. Back in September, of 2010, city officials renewed a commitment to enforcing the law against sleeping in a car. Police officers were told to look for vehicles containing possessions normally found in a home, such as food, bedding, clothing, and basic necessities. They were directed to issue a warning and provide information concerning local shelters on the first instance of a violation to issue a citation on the second, and to make an arrest on the third. It is perfectly legal to sleep in your vehicle during the day. It is not legal to sleep in your vehicle at night. It could be legal to have the car parked at night and you to sleep outside of it. On one occasion, a man was issued a warning for sleeping in his small two-door car through the night in violation of the law. He then began sleeping on the sidewalk which was legal. Cheyenne Desert Train and six other homeless individuals were arrested or cited for violating this law. In response, they filed suit against the city of Los Angeles, claiming that the law was unconstitutionally vague and was in violation of the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. The court ruled that 8502's enforcement was discriminatory against the homeless and the poor. It was voided in a June 2014 decision. A new version of the law, published as LAMC 8502, became effective in January of 2017. It made it legal to live in a car, but only on certain designated streets. Maps were drafted to show where living in a car is allowed and where it is still banned. The streets on the map were color-coded. Red streets were banned to vehicle dwelling. Yellow streets were open to vehicle dwelling, but only during daytime hours. And green streets allowed for any time vehicle dwelling. If it was once illegal to sleep in a car in LA, then after the lawsuit, it became legal, but only in certain designated areas. I wanted to find out if this was an appropriate solution to the problem. This is when an experiment began to form in my mind. It all started with the question, are the city of LA's parking maps a viable solution to allow people to live in a car? Then came a hypothesis. If I lived in my car, 
in Los Angeles, per the law, then I would legally be able to do so. I chose a month's time, 30 days in my car, in 10 different places. For the legal amount of time, a car is allowed to park in a single spot in Los Angeles. 72 hours. Leaving the house right now, heading to Hollywood. We're on the road again. I don't think I can play that song on this documentary because it's under copyright restrictions. But <clears throat> can I sing it? On the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. I bet I can probably sing it playing music with my friends. Yeah, there's nobody in this fucking car but me. I can't wait to get on the road again. What in the fuck am I doing? So I'm going to open up the parking maps right now. We are in number seven, Hollywood Area Community Station. This parking allowed between La Brea and Highland, I think. No, there isn't. Parking allowed between La Brea and Formosa. Where am I at right now? Oh, damn. So, right. <laughs> In a two block radius, right to my right. Right over by Windish. Rhea and Formosa. This is my first night, and I'm actually really surprised that I found spot per the map, you know, but uh, you know what they say, he works in mysterious ways, what, the mayor, <laughs> I'm as hard as a fucking rock, <laughs> uh. oh, my oh, that's not bad, Last night wasn't bad. Real thankful I found a parking spot. Um, right here by Wendy's on Sunset Boulevard. I wish I could see the house number of it. I'm really getting to enjoy the routine that I've established. I've always been super routine, and I feel like when you narrow your life down so far that you have to be routine, it gets tighter. You know, it, 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 you minimize your life to a certain extent. And I've reduced my life now down to this car. And then I can make my routine even that much tighter. I can cut out that much more bullshit and, and clean up my act maybe even that much more. Suffering through the heat of the sun. Wondering when the moon will show up. Mostly my life has just been dumb. Mostly my life has just been dumb. so bad and it reminded me of uh, Jeff Goldblum's character in the original uh, Jurassic Park and he makes it to the island you know where the dinosaurs are and he I guess I think it might be after when shit starts rolling downhill and he goes life will find a way or possibly he said it before shit started going downhill and it was a little bit of foreshadowing for the story but I bring that up because this morning I remembered 
where I went grocery shopping on Sunday, and it was Rouse up here. And I was like, oh, shit, I could use a bathroom at Rouse. I've already made my, um, I've already, you know, thought in my, in my subconscious, I've made my mind up to where to go pee because I've built experience on staying on Sunset Boulevard now for three days. Life will find a way. We'll find a way when we have to do whatever we have to do. to me um because la is so big well since because i've never lived actually you know what i did live in a car somewhat in transitioning from out of a place of my own and before i could get another one i had to stay with my grandparents which was just a one bedroom and granddad smoked all day so when i had nowhere to go and you know i have to wait till he goes to sleep we would just drive around sometimes and sleep in the car me and my babies When I came here, uh, I used to live in Hollywood, uh, then I moved to Maria del Rey, and then I moved to Venice. And usually on Maria del Rey, there's not a lot of homeless people, but Venice, <laughs> it's like, it's filled with it. So the well, Venice Street, people, Venice Street, there's a bunch of... Not Venice Street, like, I'm talking about Venice City, Yeah. Uh, because where I live right now, uh, so there's a street called Lincoln, and there's usually where you see most of the hum homeless people. And uh, by the Ralphs, behind it, uh, I live like a block away from the Ralphs on the Lincoln. Uh, behind it, hey! there's a couple. I am probably would say like three people. Uh, they live there in, in their car, and it's usually like, it's usually open. It's not even a bed, it's like an SUV with. Uh, I don't know how you call it here. It's like a car with. Uh... It's, a, it's an RV. No, it's not even an RV. It's, oh, it's a station wagon. Station wagon. Whatever. This is Washington. Go back up from that. So Maxella runs down to the Bevmo and the Juice Crafters. There's an IHOP. Should probably try to park close to the IHOP because then I'll have some good lighting for the nighttime, you know. I see the IHOP up there right now. Uh, it sure isn't as well lit as Sunset Boulevard was, I'll tell you that for damn sure. You see that McDonald's sign through my moon roof there? Oh, I woke up this morning, it's the fifth day, I had to go poop so bad that I was honestly scared that I was going to shit my pants. <laughs> I literally thought I was going to shit my pants. So I'm driving. I've gotten real comfortable with Ralph's just five days in. And I'm driving down Lincoln Boulevard in Venice Beach from my parking spot by the IHOP. White knuckled. Just white knuckled as can be. <laughs> Then I see McDonald's. It's those, those famous golden arches were calling to me. They said, Dan, Dan, pull over. We're the American dream. And I said, I don't know about the American dream, McDonald's. Ray Kroc. 
crock of whatever. But this morning, you're a crock of shit. Keep left to merge onto C90 East. Some good drive music, huh? Well, I got three brothers, they're younger than me, and they all got good jobs, and they got families, and if I had some money, I'd spend it on things like a sandwich, and the this one's called butter and garlic and then it's got a weird disclaimer underneath that those two words paired together it says butter and garlic flavored so. my parking spot's still here yeah, yeah. and this is going to be the first morning Oh, uh, actually slept in like past, well, easily past six, I think. So, either I'm tired or I'll get a use to my surroundings. So, if I had to guess, I'd say it's a little of both. Uh, one of the green streets is on 7th Street in between Grand and Broadway. This might be a spot. Red curve. You can kind of see how when you only have a certain amount of money in your life's down to the shambles that uh, you're like, oh, the hell with it. I'm just going to get a beer. <laughs> That's kind of what I feel like doing on this Saturday night. It's been nothing but work for me. Just going to the day job and then uh, working on this. Just work, 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 work. Where's the play? All work. What was it? it was the movie The Shining, where uh, Jack Nicholson's character was sitting down at his uh, writing table. He was sitting down at his writing table in the middle of that hotel lobby, which I always thought was weird. He's like, you know, right here, and he's sitting down and uh, he's going crazy. And uh, his wife sees his reading and she knows he's going crazy because she sees he's written repeatedly like a hundred times. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All work and no play makes Jack a dull, uh, dull, dull boy or dull boy? Dull boy. Come on, park it. Come on, park it. Hot diggity damn. Let's keep. And I'm parked on um, 8th Street in downtown. And the street in front of me is a street with a special name. And the sign for it's right through my moon roof. When I have hope, it's all I need. Uh, we we have a, a skincare product business. We make soaps and lotions and and uh, other stuff like uh, the other ones. Um, yeah, all natural, you know, good for your skin. We actually start doing the um, the uh, live, actually we start living in the RV to develop our company, you know, so we can have the time and the money to to develop, you know, our baby right here. So yeah, so we can use rent money to develop our you know our dreams pretty much. I think the vehicular homeless are different. First, they're like a hidden one. They're a hidden homeless because you can't really tell. You're right, they are kidding uh, until they start to look for them. And then, then once you do catch an eye for them, they're everywhere. So do you kind of know your car neighbors? I met a young couple. There was a farmer's market uh, here in downtown today. It seems like an opportunity for you to, like, dig deeper, right? To go get their number or their card or something? To go visit them? Yeah. Oh, I got their information, yeah. I got their Instagram and card and everything. Check them out, man. And she just messaged me and she said I could come by their home sometime and check it out. Have you thought about going back? So you're not going back to your apartment at all? I can't give up now. 
<laughs> hey guys, you guys know Uncle Dan? Hi. 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 What's up, buddy? Devin just came from basketball. How's He's going to do the show. Dan. What's up, bro? All right, later. All right. All right. All right, man. Love, Love you, too. Good. Bye. Another rent check, late another bill I can't pay in the mailbox. Another void in my heart in a dream that won't start in a deadlock. <laughs> oh, why is my phone just starting to work? It's blowing up. It's 5.30 in the morning. It's going to take me 25 minutes to drive to work. And... Some dude tried to just sell me diamonds, which is random. But let's go to work. But now it's just a beacon of fear Oh, where dreams come to die In the heat of the fire down here California Rock me slow So I'm looking for my spot right now in San Pedro And I can park on this street Pacific In between 18th and 22nd so here's 18. It starts right here. So I'm gonna start looking for a spot that looks doable. That looks well lit too. 7-Eleven right there. 20th. It's 22nd. Yeah, this stuff's not as well lit as I like. Or as busy. So the street I wanted to park on had street cleaning on Wednesday, so that's gonna stream me for the 72 hour stay here. So I'm going over to another street called Gaffey. So I made it over to Gaffey Street, and I don't like the looks of this. <laughs> I'm going to turn it around and see if I can find a better looking parking spot. There doesn't seem like on the side of the street that I want to park on that it's all red curd. And this stuff on the other side of the street seems kind of sketchy. So yeah, I don't like any of those parking spots. So San Pedro is kind of a... It's a waterfront community that's on the base of the, I guess you would call it the Palos Verdes Peninsula. And so there was a park up the hill a little ways I'm going to look into. And it tends to get a little nicer up there too. So I'm going to look at that and see if I can find a spot up there. On 25th Street in San Pedro, they have a big section of this green. But they have this no stopping anytime signs. And that's kind of a contradiction. I have this label green, vehicle dwelling allowed any time, and yet have these signs that say no stopping any time. Then I seen a bunch back there that said um, no parking from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., which is sleeping hours. To call it a green street is ridiculous because there's so many different signs of restricting where you can park and what you can park. That is so hard. There's no cars parked there because it all says no stopping any time. The green zone extends a little bit up towards this uh, Starbucks. I'm going to park by this Starbucks. This is my neighborhood if I'm going to live here. This van is my home, so be it. But the people here need to see that if someone is sleeping in their neighborhood and has any respect for themselves, they will show the respect the others deserve. I like to keep it nice and tidy. I don't like to leave a mess. I will leave no trace. I'm not supposed to be here. This is temporary, and that is everything in life until you go. If you're in this situation because you have no choice, then make a choice and get the hell out or get the hell in. If you're in this for the long run, you're going to be staying in your home, in your homes, a van, a car, a truck, an RV, anything. So what? If the tag is good and you own it and you live in it, it's your home. A goal, if you have a goal to get out of this, then get out of it. If you have a goal to get into it, get into it. Anything in life, you must set a goal. You know, I forgot for about 10, 15 years what a goal was. Uh, Melrose Avenue. Is it Avenue or Boulevard? I think it's Avenue. Boy, it's loud as shit last night. Let me tell you that. It was super loud. As I've learned so far, usually busy means safe, though. Um, this morning I really want to. Uh, 
I think before I get out, I'm going to organize my, my little pad a little bit and take my dirty clothes and put them in that laundry hamper. It's getting kind of messy. Oh. And so I try to explain that how important a car is here. You know, everybody has a car here because everything's so spread out. And some people end up staying in their cars because that's all they have. And they're like, oh, well, I know somebody or I knew somebody or I did that once. Or, or every, some one person told me everybody's done that one at one point in time. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a tough situation right there. I don't know. Living in your car, man, uh, especially in L.A. It's just too much. L.A. is just too crowded and too busy. It's like too much out here. So I, don't, I wouldn't know what to do. I don't live in L.A., but I got family who do. I haven't been specifically homeless out here. I've been like homeless out there. I used to stay at like San Bernardino. It's like more space out there. So it's like more you can do out there. And I have friends that can help me out too. So stuff like that. And you got to do stuff on your own sometimes too. It's pretty hard out here sometimes. Everybody got different ways, man. Everybody go through stuff. So yeah. But like you're filming folks in that situation too. So whenever you say essentially, I'm making a documentary about you and how your life is and I want to try it out for a while. What's that reaction? Um, They're like, who are, who are you, pretty white boy? Why are you trying to do this? No, not necessarily. So you're halfway through, so you're halfway through your location of neighborhoods. Yeah, this is Are my... you seeing a difference in how you're being treated? I see a difference in the availability for parking. Man, parking in Los Angeles is so crazy, especially like out here on Fairfax. Like no rules because they got all the best stores and like everybody comes down here from like all type of cities, not just LA. It's people from all type of states, people from Florida, Arizona, a couple places, man. It's like crazy out here. You're finding that the richer neighborhoods are having more restrictions. Yes, I don't think somebody that lived in the car would be in the certain neighborhoods that I'm in just because of the difficulty of finding parking. And most of them don't know about the green streets or the law that I'm dealing with, anyways, and trying to live by. So that's true. So are there so many restrictions here in certain neighborhoods that keep out people? And that's kind of one of my points too, is the law of segregation of the poor, you know? Does it keep them in a certain area rather than everywhere, you know? This, this uh, street here on uh, Stanley and Oakwood, it's got the two hour parking except by permit. So it's like, what if you live here, you get a permit to park here? I don't know. There's so many signs that it's kind of confusing to read, really. I'm turning right on Fairfax off of 3rd. Um, good luck. I don't know where I'm going to park and not pay for it and or be kind of in fear that I'm going to get towed. I think the Fairfax district, it runs up towards the hills here towards uh, Willoughby. When I last I looked at the map. Yeah, so okay, the green streets allow for vehicle dwelling anytime. And at nighttime, it has been feasible to park at a meter because meters aren't enforced after 8 p.m. But, dude, like, what do you do with your car throughout the day? Even this neighborhood that I was in in uh, the Fairfax district, even it had signs posted like two hour parking and or. Uh, da, 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 da. No stopping any time. What else does it have? Just stuff like that. So right now I'm trying to find a place. I don't want to get my car towed, you know? Why would I want to get my car towed? And that's kind of scary right now. And if I'm going to stay in this neighborhood, then this is a chore to find a place to park. So what's the point of paying attention to them? Like, what is it going to do? Like, you not get you towed too, but yeah. Oh, mom, I've sinned. You don't know the trouble I'm in, no. Coming in. The guy I met, the artist, the one that liked his meth, because he openly talked about it yesterday. Really good dude. We sat down at. I don't know if he's a good dude, really smart dude. He's, we sat down and had a cigarette, and uh, he was telling me about how his friends described him. And he used the word, uh, oh, dude, it's so, so rad, the bohemian lifestyle you're living. And when does that stop being charming? And when does it start being gross? Oh, mama, I'm leaving for the rain. It's coming.
coming in. Right? Can you be a quote unquote traveler into your 40s? Is that still a good look? Into your 30s? Or do you grow out of that in your 20s? What am I? I'm 31 right now. He was my age, and uh, it had taken a wear on his body, that's for sure. He kind of looked like hell. I'm so tired of this city I'm so tired of this town Oh mama, please forgive me If I'm hurting you now I'm packing my bag for the leaving Packing my bag for the road And I'm heading out this evening Cause I have to I had, my dad just texted me and it was just in a it was just in a fatherly way but this is something I posted on Instagram about not knowing where the hell I'm gonna park for the next 72 hours and he goes why don't you just go home and edit some stuff so I said get behind me Satan <laughs> and that's a, a quote from the Bible where uh, uh, when uh, Jesus was being tempted in his time in the desert. And basically, Satan had told him to give up. So it was a joke. <laughs> Not that wasn't a joke. That scene wasn't a joke. But I told my dad, get behind me, Satan. I said, I'm not giving up. And I don't think he quite got it. He goes, I'm not Satan. I'm like, no shit. It was, it was a joke. One of the hardest things I think about um, looking at homelessness is seeing how many times we can fall into apathy. Um, I should give up. These are the things that people struggle with all the time. To speak with the next available 311 representative, press zero or remain on the line. So you see 25th there, like where does it begin? Does it begin down? It's kind of on the map. I had it on my phone. But I've, I've been over there the last couple of nights, and it looks like maybe it begins at Patton on the east side. Like Patton and 25th, completely red. And then if you're going on 25th towards Western, yeah. it goes from red to yellow to green. Um, divorce, the way you're thinking about it, divorce the, the map from the signage. So the way it works, it, the, the signage that's on the street doesn't always dovetail with the way it's it, the vehicle dwelling is zoned. So you can be zoned in a green zone and then have a sign that says no parking anytime. That's why part of, of, of 8502 is that um, you have to, you have to uh, obey all posted signage because the whatever's posted, the signage always trumps the map. Is there anybody else I could talk to uh, uh, more in depth about it or like? The Harbor Area Community Police Station? That would be, yeah, exactly. That would be Har the Harbor Area Community Police Station. What are we doing, Mean Gene? Yo, didn't wash the bitch. Dude, I ain't got time to wash the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, bro? What up, brother? This is your moment. This ain't all about me. Remember that. It's about Dan and his story about the war. Say that again. I don't think, Gene, you just have to live in the suburbs in a, in a, in a stereotypical perfect Wait, life. What? What did you say? I said suburbs. No. You said suburbs with a white picket fence. Three words, people. For you people out there that I'm part of my life, you're just seeing a guy sweeping in his hand. You're just seeing a guy who's just making his way. You're seeing a guy who anybody else would think was crazy. Kind of looking forward to what this guy's looking like right now, because he didn't go to sleep. He's still playing his music. <laughs>
Is that Nelly? I think that's Nelly he's playing. Uh, I really want to stick my head out of the sunroof and just pop out like a jack-in-the-box and record that way and see if he doesn't see me. I don't know what the hell he's up to right now. This dude stayed up the whole night. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you can stay up the whole entire night. Sat there talking to himself again. He's talking to himself. <laughs> you want to know the inside story? Why? Why script? It? Why I'm not story? saying I'm not saying the script. It. I'm trying to figure it out myself through the film. My point, no, my point is, last night, remember, we're talking about the white picket fence, right? Right. I don't necessarily look forward to that lifestyle. Well, I don't necessarily want that life either. What life? The life I mean, that's a stereotypical, ideal life in America. Sure as hell, who will meet you? How? Look at you. Look, turn the fucking camera on, dickhead. Look. You're not stereotypical. You're, you're, Let me challenge you. Let me challenge I, you. That doesn't mean that I don't bust my ass every day. So don't come I at me with that. You no. look like, you act like, and you move like, but you're not. Check it out. My challenge is for you. Why are you going to ju judge? Why? No. Judge? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Big fucking work, pal. You know I'm facing that. I know. You know but you just said, you just said what? Hey, brother, you know what? brother, brother hold what on. Say, what give give half a second. What did I say? You said what I look like. Look, I didn't judge you. That's judging. No, judging, looking at you and making a fucking determination. <laughs> Stick away, kid. You are fucking all over the page on yourself. I'm I'm crazy as shit, right? You've never quite work out like you hope. You're a cop. You ain't no judge. No judge made that law. Some politician who was getting his pockets aligned made this shit. Because people bitched to guys like me. When we lose it all monetarily, we lose it all physically. What happens to us guys? You, me, the rest of the side here? You might lose some someday. What if that politician lost his ass? Fuck your rules. You know what? Rules are made to be bent, laws are meant to be broken. I'm breaking them all. Welcome to LA. See how ready this looks? This might be a bend. There's two on there. What about the guy who came out of here LA today? Somebody said, I got an old RV. I don't know if it runs, it's just sitting there. It's down in Washington. This might help somebody someday. Right now, it's sitting here dormant. Ain't nobody in now that thing, if they are. They're hiding. It must have been such a scumbag in my mind. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want anybody to see me like that. So I right hid. So, so, so in your mind, you changed how you saw yourself. Yeah. How, how, tell me I how changed, I changed because he showed me that light isn't going to hurt me. You know, people are scared of the light because they don't want to be seen. Now, I was the same way. I didn't want to be seen. I hid in that bedroom like a swab. I hid from everybody and everything. All the good in me was hidden. The bad was out there. It's always showed. So you hear in the mouth. I'm not scared of no fucking lights no more. I slap under them. I walk under them. I look up at them. And I turn them on, guys. You just scared of the light? Turn around and look at it. Turn around and look at it. Can't hurt me. Thinking about how crazy this life has been lately. No one's gonna save me now. 
He said, kid, where are you heading? I said, that's a good question. He laughed and said, you'll figure it out. But I'm riding in the backseat in this old taxi, heading through a tunnel downtown. Because I couldn't get in the car because I didn't know which one it was. You didn't know? I didn't know what the heat tunnel. Call it, you just had a van. So there was a van on cars. Carson. They dropped me off to Long Carson Street, other side of town. I spent another 20 bucks to come back. Keep going. Oops, sorry. You might want to start a little bit. Now you see, right there, that red band? Yeah. Huh. Looks kind of like a red band I was in. See that red line? Keep going. See that red line? Oh, stop. You just passed where it was parked. You were just driving in the spot it was in for eight months. We're right in front of where he worked at 2220. Fucking Carson, pal. He slept and it worked in that shithole, and they never told it. The day before I get it, it's a red day. California dreaming, kid. Yeah. Smiles on my face. Right where it started. Right where it right where it started. 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 You hear that? Um, um, Jersey. Is that Jersey or Brooklyn? New York. Just leave it alone. Started. I don't know how to move on, kid, but I have a direction. I have no idea. There's no fucking roadmap to life. He didn't put one out, but he just put guidelines to set up some rules. I basically fuck. No, it's our choice. Rules can be bent. Laws can be broken. God's laws but nobody broken. has a roadmap. No. No, I don't have no, a roadmap. No. no, but you have your direction already. You've had your direction. It's Gene's last day in California. He's giving his uh, van away this morning to a friend he met. Because it really wasn't his van to begin with. It was supposedly his brother's van. But nobody ever had paperwork on it or anything. And so the van's kind of just been passed down from person to person. And tell me about that story. What's what's that, you know? Think about that story. That's like a house being passed down from generation to generation. It's like we only play a small part in this earth that we stand on we have our years that we've been given and they may only be 60 years they may only be 70 years they may only be 80 years gene stay in the van was only a couple weeks like three and a half weeks and now it's going to a guy named tom who knows how, how long his stay will be maybe it'll be a year maybe it'll be two days Maybe it'll get towed tomorrow. But the story doesn't leave that band because the story's the people. The 72 hours that it gets to stay in one spot isn't the vehicle story, it's the person's story who's, who lives in it. You want some advice? Don't give up. The fuck you. Fuck them. But love first. Don't ever give up, ever. You know better. Shower, all you need. And shower works? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Hot shower in five minutes. Everything you need then. Oh. Uh yeah. -huh. Yeah. Need more. Yeah. No, you don't. We don't need more. Yeah. We want not to paint the RV. We just bought the paint and everything. What color? I'm gonna paint it. We paint this. The kitchen. The wood? No, not the wood, the, the gray. We okay. paint the gray and we put all these stickers. Did you put the, the tiling on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what looks up there. Yeah. And then we put this in the restroom. But it's not More dirty time. because it's um yeah, no, yeah, no. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh. So I'm gonna put this on this side too. And then we're gonna paint up white color. Yeah. We're gonna paint this white, but then we're gonna do this line on gray. Yeah. We want to paint this white, right? White. Of the wood. The wood white. Yeah. Eventually, we're gonna take out this um, carpet because it's kind of I don't, we don't like it. It's so dirty. Here, you guys like here? Yeah, it's got water. You want to eat all your food? That's what I bought it for. 
<laughs> really? You can put some mushrooms in here, but you know I forgot. And this is hard. Do you like apricots? This is so little, mm -hmm. but you know. Thank you. What money, I think. I like really cooking, but um, this is maybe not today. Is this tortellini? Yeah, but they're yeah. a little hard, man. I, I shouldn't leave them there for more time. Oh, I can't sit up. I can't sit up. Shit. I can't. Can I sit up? I can't. Oh, God. Oh. But it's getting to that part of the trip that I don't really remember what day it is. And I don't really. It's like it's getting more and more normal to be in the car. More and more normal to be living like this. And my mentality's changed a bunch from since I started by who I've met by um, my own experiences of finding parking spots my own experiences of living in the car you know I've always been a mess I guess and that's just who I am but you tell me that you love me and don't see how you can and you're out the door and here I go again here I go again You know, at the end, it's, 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 it's freedom. It's freedom, for sure. So, how important is freedom to the both of you? Uh, super important. Yeah. It's the most important thing, I think. You know, like, not, not, have not, time to do whatever. You... So, how has having time improved your life? A lot. Like we get to do more, more of what we love. You know, like we spend time together, we work. Really. Yeah. How has uh, being on the same page as a couple? made it easier for you guys to make a decision like this it's for sure it's, it's easier you know like i don't know like we all we we, we know we're going in the, in the same direction you know we take uh we make decisions like towards the same uh goal goal you know so it's way more easy when you when your uh significant other we were talking things about like you today. yeah we were talking about that earlier More salad, finish it. Go ahead. You want to go for it? Are you, do you want some of them here? No, I'm, thank you. I'm okay. Somebody's got to eat. Uh, yeah. I don't eat all of them. You you see, you're, you're a, okay, I'll do a little bit. You're yeah. a six foot, bro. You got to eat a little bit more. Hey, there you go. Thank you. Are you sure? Are you sure? Ooh, open. That's good dessert, huh? I think I'm going to start missing this, to be honest. Been a lot of fun activity. Ooh, a lot of fun. You know what I said this morning? Like five minutes ago? I said, I'm going to miss this. Said I'm gonna miss living in my car. To speak to a police operator, press zero. I can't really help you because I'm not there to look at the site. But that's what I would do. As you know, you can even tell me, talk to me at Harbor and send me at Harbor Division. So any officer that stops you in that area is gonna be a Harbor cop. What's so the chances? A, what's the chances that I could uh, uh, like? Would they come out on an appointment and kind of walk through it with me, or no? Um, no, like, like if right now you needed officers to go down there, no, yeah. because it's not really technically uh, a real car or an emergency. I mean, if you wanted to come down here and show the map and just kind of get somebody's advice that way, but even then, um, you're the first person that I have ever done a call in regards to wanting a specific, you know, like general area where you could be parking legally or based off of the map. 
we came to the conclusion that um, 25th Street's green zone runs from a street called Constellation Way to the east, and, and then it runs to Moray over here to the west, and to the north and south, it goes up western, north, like, what do you say? 200 feet, and then I suppose it goes south down western 200 feet. So technically, I think I've been parked illegally all my stays here because I've always parked up here by the Starbucks up the way. I think you can see it across the street there. Uh, can you see it there? Yeah, that Starbucks right there by that black car where that man's walking right now. So starting on Western, which is right here, and 25th, right there, we have our first sign that restricts where we can park. So that's a, that's technically a sleeping van, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., vehicle 7 foot high or 22 foot long. And then you see the no stopping sign right there too. All that, all the way to that, that intersection that we just walked from is supposed to be green. And almost to Moray Avenue. And there it is. See it? There's Moray Avenue. Now I'm going to cross the street here and I'm going to walk on the other side of the road. None of this is, is parkable. There's three no stopping signs here on the, the south side of the road across from this grocery store. And just about by this Chase Bank up towards Western, uh, the curb turns red again. And then we have another, uh, basically a size restriction sleeping ban on RVs up here on the corner. But it says leaving the restricted area. So technically, I think it, the restricted area would be this way. Now possibly, see that Toyota SUV? Possibly over there you could park. Maybe that is the one spot on 25th Street. Oh shit, nope, nope, nope. It's, so it's a green curve, which green curves are only enforced till 8 p.m. But then it has this, it has this no parking from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. sign. As far as I've been able to see, just from the research I've done and the people I've talked to, this is where the 25th Street Green Street begins. And it's supposed to run all the way up here, all the way towards Moray Avenue. But, where you, where you can park has sleeping bands. As you can see, there's three on this side of the street. One, two, three right up there by the fire station the interesting thing there's a fire truck up here that it's the green i was seeing it on the other side of the street it's green but it's got the sleeping band sign too so on green curbs which are like short-term parking you can park there past a certain time at night all night until they're enforced at 8 a.m but this one has a sleeping van i'm gonna walk up western now going north it's supposed to be you're supposed to be able to park like 200 feet, both north and south of western. 2, so technically according to the guy at 311 that I called, you could park legally overnight to here. This is the 200 feet from the intersection, right where my right foot is. That's 200 feet from the intersection down here. But my nine stays, I parked up here a little bit past that. That post office box. God, I get my directions all screwed up. It's like, like I'm a human compass here. I'm walking over to the west side of Western. I'm going to go up north and I'm going to step it off from the intersection and see just how far 200 feet gives me up Western from 25th. 
One, two, three, four, five, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred. You can park here right at my feet, all the way up here towards this red curb. Now you see the red curb up there? Right there by the arrow, basically. So it's right there. But technically, that's kind of in a turn lane. So I don't know if it's necessarily safe to park. So you see where I'm standing? And then all the way up there is a turn lane. So think about it. If all these cars are coming down the hill here, and they're trying to turn, much just like that one is, and that one, would you want to park right here? So now I'm going to walk south down western over 25th and I'm going to step that off 200 feet. Let's see just how far 200 feet gives us. That first step is going to be 1, 2, 8, 99, 100, 100, 1, 2, 9, 200. Okay, from here, right where I'm standing, up to the intersection is 200 feet. I guess you could park from the red to my feet legally. So that's that's one parking spot. Or all of 25th Street, Green Street, we've got three parking spots. If you want to count that one behind me. It's got two up there by just just south of the Starbucks and then one right behind me where that guy's walking. So this street gives three people parking spots. But it reminded me of uh, the story in the book of Genesis about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. So if you don't know that story, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, I guess there are two cities together. A lot of people just talk about Sodom, but for some reason it's mentioned Sodom and Gomorrah. But it was a really corrupt city, and people were up to no good. And so at the time, God was like, I'm going to destroy this whole city. But uh, there was a man that questioned God's decision in that, and his name was uh, Abraham. So he pleaded with God at the time. He goes, are you really going to destroy the city? What if there's somebody that, what if, what if there's 50 righteous people there? What if not everybody is evil? Will you really destroy the city? And so God answered him and he goes, if I find 50 people there, I won't, will not destroy the city. So then Abraham said, well, what if you find, I think it was 45, will you destroy the city then? And then God said, if I find 45, I won't destroy the city. And then Abraham kept questioning and kept questioning. And he finally got it down to 10. He goes, if you find 10 people that are righteous, will you destroy the city? And God said, no. If I find 10 people, I will not destroy the city. But he just found one family. If there's 10 people that deserve a parking spot, that are clean, that don't leave litter outside their home, that keep care of their car, that aren't causing trouble, should, if there's 10 people in the city of L.A., is it worth making it this hard to follow the laws? Uh, so I just left the police department here in San Pedro. And I talked to an officer that was working the desk. And I told him about the project. I told him about how I was struggling with the Green Street there, 25th and Western. The one that I've been beating a drum about. And about defining where I can and can't park. And he gave me somebody's number. And he broke it down on the map too. Um, and then we just got talking on the subject of homelessness in general. So what is the, the answer for homelessness? What is the answer for people living in their cars? What is the answer for life? It's got to be freedom first off. Wasn't that what our country was founded on? But freedom means taking care of yourself. And that's a big ass responsibility. Um, certain places you can't park and you can't just go to sleep in your car for some reason. And even if it's going to the daytime, it's like if they see you nodding off in your car, it's like they pull up on you and tell you you can't sleep in this car, you can't sleep in And if you legally park somewhere and you fall asleep in your car, they're gonna tell you that your time is up. They'll mark your tires. And they do to all cars. In front of a building that was a white loading zone. I said, of course they're not gonna give you right here. So I parked my car on a one-way street in the loading zone. Go, I leave for 15 minutes. I hurry up and I run back. I'm back in 15 minutes. 
the parking meter lady is standing there smoking a cigarette. I'm like, where's my car? She said, Look, Jim, is that your car here? I said, yeah, you know it was my car. You've seen me around here many times. And she told my car. And it's in town. If you got a job, you know, as a police officer, if you got a job as a parking, you know, officer, then that's your job. But don't go beyond that and use it as power. It's like prestige and power to put someone out of their car on the street. Get hot. Some people just burn out here on these streets And by the looks of you, darling, you've had enough Look here, babe, this isn't me What did you really think that this would be? And you want to kiss, but you're not ready Ah, oh, tired. It's not tired of staying in the car, just walking around all day and it's like, mm. That kind of dude that I'll work so hard that you won't even believe it. But I work for, a, a, what do I work for? I work for a, a ending, right? I work for a moment where I can finally go, bah, I'm done. It's like I'll sprint right towards the finish line. Not real good marathons. I'm, I'm a great sprinter. I could probably sprint with the best. Not physically, obviously, but um, um, theoretically um, in a metaphoric type of way I can sprint the hardest that you'll ever see anybody sprint in your entire lives but that means once I'm done running I'm done so I'm ready for some beers I'll bring the beers I'll bring the beers yes I'll bring the beers there's a bunch of food on the street here like crazy but the restaurant's supposed to be right up here Ah, there it is. There it is. I mean, what, what, what's really a requirement for life? Food and sleep. What else do we really need? And then if you throw a goal or if you throw a dream on top of that, and that's what life's all about is those three things. Food, sleep, and a goal. If the three requirements in life are, one, a good night's sleep, two, food. <laughs> what was the third one? <laughs> We're just talking about the third one. But so I've got, <laughs> I got the first two met. Maybe that was too much uh, Korean beer at the uh, little gastro pub I just went to. But I was earlier I was saying there was three different things that life requires. Maybe people were the third one, but I don't know. We'll see. No, I was just thinking that technically today is day 30. So, does that mean I have to spend the night in the car tonight? <laughs> I don't know. Night 1, night 2, night 3, night 4, night 5, night 6, night 7, night 8, night 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 6, 27, 28, 29, 30. I guess technically I do. Oh well, one more night. One 
more day. <laughs> Isn't that a country song? One more day. Oh, God. Maybe a night like this, a peaceful night, is all I did need. Maybe I didn't get what I want, but I got what I needed. And that's a good night's sleep. Now, if you want more of the story, pal. Gene, I got some stuff to do tonight, but I can call you back tomorrow. Alright, brother. Well, I got stuff I got to do tonight, so. I'm going to my house. So let me let me film what I'm doing right now, and I'll have to. I'm gonna have to get back to you. You're going home yep. for the first time in a month. So am I. I'm going home for the first time in 20 some odd fucking years, pal. Well, good, good for both of us, huh? Still? I think so, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I think like... Your parents are there. They're maybe more okay. 
my my parents too, but they, I mean, but you guys don't make it look crazy at all. No, no. I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You just had to make another one. If somebody saw this one and you're walking in their office. Hey, a crazy motherfucker gene, whatever happened to him? What, you ain't follow along? Read my story, pal. Read what I write. Because I'm the screenwriter. He was the actor. There's something getting filmed. I stopped and talked to a dude up here. They were filming something with Netflix. I explained to my documentary project. And he's like, oh, cool. And they go, I'm gonna like, I'm like, what are you working on? He goes, oh, something for Netflix. Like, it was no big deal. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you're taking up half the damn street, sir. LA! That's right! In the best city in the world! In the best city in the world! Very Chitro Zico, baby! We're our own country! Our own state. The LA Dream is actually all, always alive. Why would you say that? Um, because have you ever been here? Look at this! I think I'm from it's a small a dream city. to come here from anywhere from yeah. the Midwest. I like seeing how you guys do everything. Yeah, here's what. Yeah, we spend a lot of time here. We are working very hard. I'm probably gonna offer you guys something different. I'm a filmmaker. So my angle with this film. You wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Try out for wrestling next time. <laughs> you make that comedy now, cause that's what I love. Then what we can do is start to show and get some, some awareness like you're doing you ready you pal let's make a blockbuster <laughs>